In this video, we're going to bring the entirety of Google Maps into Unreal Engine. We're going to demonstrate a few use cases, things like animations at the start of maybe a promotional film you're doing. We can use it to create architectural diagrams, and we can also use it to simply take improved skills of an existing site and a project that we're working on. And while we're there, we're gonna transport to the likes of New York, Paris, Venice, and my hometown, Liverpool. So let's get into it. So the first thing we wanna do is open the Epic Games Launcher, go into Marketplace, and then we wanna search for Cesium. And then it's Cesium for Unreal. I've obviously downloaded this previously. You then install it to Engine. As a little extra tip, if for some reason, say it doesn't work from the marketplace, you then come back to Library and then it lives here. That That is a useful thing to know when it comes to what version you want to use and all that sort of stuff. Next, we want to head to Google Maps. Sorry. Google Maps platform and we want to set up what's called an API key. This is kind of your access into using the Google Maps platform you know, within another program. So you log in just using a, a Google account. You do have to give um, a certain level of credentials, including payment details, but it doesn't take payment from you. It's, it's just kind of taking that data from you. Um, I think there is like a paid version or, you know, there's, there's a paid um, limit or something like that. So then at the top, you just want to type in tile, map tiles, API. Hit enable. Once that's enabled, you then just want to go to credentials and then maps API key. You then use that key um, Make a note of it actually fair. So I, I just use like notepad or something. Make a note of that key and then we'll jump into Unreal Engine and use it there. Let's then start a new project. Using Unreal Engine 5.2. Just do architectural blank. And with Unreal Engine open, go to edit, plugins and search for season for Unreal. Tick that and restart. Upon restart, you should see a window to the left that says Cesium for Unreal. Then you want to do is right click in your content browser, create a new level, jump in there, and then create a Cesium Sun Sky and a blank 3D tiles tile set. And that'll form the base of what we're going to do next. So with everything loaded in now, we need to give Unreal Engine the, the data using that API key. So select Cesium 3D tile set there. And if you scroll down or just look down, you've got source there. Change that to from URL. Then I will link this and a few other bits and bobs below. You then go to cesium.com and it explains how you can use your API key. And where we've said from URL, if we just scroll down this article, we've then got this link here. You copy that into the URL there. And in that last section, you replace that with your API key. Now, as I've mentioned, I've got it saved in notepad so I'm then going to copy that paste it in here hit enter and we should just see the the world uh, load in front of us you can see it's it's having a think this will obviously vary on computer speed internet connection and all that sort of stuff but then look at that Sometimes it gets a little bit funny with loading tiles as you you know as you're looking around. See the way like it's 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 unloading them and stuff like that. But we'll um, we'll get into the settings in a bit. But look at that! That is absolutely.
absolutely amazing. The amount of uses that we've got as architects are, are almost endless with this technology. The next thing then is to find an exact location to jump to so you can actually use this thing for your own projects. So where better to look first than New York City? Now, for me, I find the best way to grab coordinates is to just right click, so find the place in, in Google Maps and then right click exactly where you wanna be and then paste the coordinates just somewhere. I've just got notepad open. Jumping back to Unreal Engine, you have Geo Reference there, select that, and then you've got Latitude and Longitude. The one, the number on the left is Latitude. Paste that in, hit Enter. The one on the right is Longitude. Hit Enter, and then fingers crossed, we should be in Manhattan somewhere. Here we go. And look at that, we are directly over. It takes a little bit of, because we're so high, sometimes it's better to just angle it and then just pan down. Zooming in takes ages. If we just then zoom out, we are then exactly where we asked for. Is that not absolutely phenomenal? I haven't got the the best internet connection in the world that might just be why that's taking a little minute to load but i think you get the idea now how do we use this for practical applications well, one thing that um we often need is you know drone footage or maybe a nice aerial shot and sometimes you can't get the, the weather or something like that, or client doesn't want to pay for the drone shot. So just for example, we're working on several projects in the Baltic Triangle of Liverpool. So rather than taking like a quite a low res screenshot from Google Maps, I can now take still images within Unreal Engine to a, a resolution of my choosing and a, and a quality of my choosing which I'll get into in a sec but I can also take little animations as well so let me just get the coordinates that I'm after and then let's transport ourselves to the great city of Liverpool Just takes a little sec, as I say. I could probably do with upgrading my internet. Anyway, here we are, right? So, as I've mentioned, I've now got the, the liberty to take a really high resolution render. Let's just knock that off now, we don't need it. So that's absolutely fantastic. Or, as I said, we can take a little animation so first things first if I just want to take a still I would have this sort of view click your little burger menu create camera here cine camera actor and then if we jump into the camera actor that's that's then going to be my still and that is so much more powerful than just kind of taking a, a screenshot from uh, Google Earth but then to go one further let me jump out of here. Oh, that's a nice view, isn't it? <laughs> um, you can also use this for like backdrops and everything for CGI's. Let's say we want to do a little, little introductory clip or something just to put our site in context. Let's create another camera. Maybe just knock the focal length to 20. Let's jump in it. Okay. Then add a level sequence. I'll just call it new level sequence. I'm just, I'm just being quite quick. We then drag that camera into our sequence. Give a keyframe, a transform at the start. Drag to the end of your timeline. Oh, 
underneath. And then let's just sort of pan to there, maybe just a fraction zoomed in. Another transform keyframe. Change your view to cinematic viewport. And hit play. And there we are. It's a little, it's a little quick. You just add frames to slow that down, but you get the idea. How powerful is that? You know, to demonstrate your sight in context. You could even use this, you know, you, you could be creating a, a, an animation, couldn't you, that, that introduces the project. And actually, that gives me an idea. Um, what you can do, right? I, I've always wanted to do one of these where, let me just, let me just go as, as high as I can. It, it does take a little while. Think of the scale that we're, we're working to, right? And then you could actually start your camera here. Let's do another one, camera actor. And then let's load in a volumetric cloud. And we need to go higher then. What I want to do is I want to like, yeah, there we go. I want to like pan through. Can't go any faster than that. Oh yeah, 116. Yeah, there we go, there we go, right? So I've always wanted to do one of these shots that, you know, you go through the clouds like that. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure where it looks like this now. If we just do 10, 100, right? So then, I've already made a camera, haven't I? But let me just do another one. So see the way now we've got a bit of cloud in front of us, right? Let's do another camera here. Cine camera actor, okay. Another level sequence, let's just call this clouds sequence. And let's drag in this one. Lock in our first point, transform. Let's go to the end. And then, oh yeah, there we go. I'll just pan down there, that was quick. And then where's our size? Uh, over here. I can't tell you exactly where the site is. Come on. Right. <laughs> We're getting there. Okay. So then, something like that. That'll do. Lock that in. Transform. Hit play. Oh. Look at that. Now, you might want to add a couple more keyframes. I don't like the way it sort of it, it, it goes in front of the site and sort of lands on top of it, but you get the idea anyway. What an introduction to your animation or your project, a presentation or something like that. That is, is absolutely fantastic. What a powerful tool. And we have been using this at Studio RBA since we discovered it. So with a couple of use cases out the way, there's just a few more little settings to be aware of. The first one is level of detail. Now something to be mindful of in Unreal Engine is if you hover over any tool, it gives you a, a description. So if we hover over what, what is basically the, the level of detail slider, maximum number of pixels when rendering the tile sets. This is used to select an appropriate level of detail. A low value will cause tiles to have a high level of detail, a low value. So with that in mind, let's just jump out of the camera and arguably the most famous building in Liverpool is one of our two cathedrals. This is the Anglican Cathedral. Now I need to calm that a camera speed down now. And it's set to 16. And by the way, I should say that, you know, the credentials that you've given to the Google Maps platform, um, my understanding is that you have a free limit of usage and I do think it, it will charge you if you go beyond that usage. So just be mindful of that. 
and level of quality here will up your use so just a, just a little warning so if, but if we drop that to say a two it's just taking a little sec to that might be too that might be too low that ah, right so you can see it loading now Right. So it's just taken a little sec to have a think about that. For ease, if we go the other way, so if I do a hundred, right, so see, so that's a high number, so that's very clumsy. If we then jump back to, say, one, we'll give it a sec to load in, and then it, it, it will recover that level of detail. So while we're, while we're waiting for that to load anyway, another little tip is you can change the, the time of day. Now something to note is with the 3D Google Earth, um, the photogrammetry I think is, is what it is. Um, oh, you can just start to see, by the way, you can just start to see stuff loading in now while, while we're chatting. Um, you can just see it starting to get a little bit sharper. Um, the, the what I was going to say was the time of day is kind of baked in to the that three D scan, isn't it? So there's only so much you can do. However, it looks here that we haven't got a lot of sharp shadows, so it should work. So we go into cesium, sun and sky, date and time, and then you just change the the solar time, and you can get different lighting results. Again, if we hover over it. The current total time represented as hours from midnight. After changing this value, you must call, oh well, yeah, that, that's some sort of C++ thing. So from midnight. So one is one hour from midnight. And then that's, that's a, a, a very much a night scene. Five hours. And and so on, so on. You get, you get, the, you get the idea. Let's just do three. So that, that's a lovely little uh, additional tool as well. So we've got level of quality, which I must admit hasn't fully translated, but just take me word for it. The, if, you, if you know, with a decent, decent enough internet connection or just a little bit of patience, it, it, it does up the level of quality. And again, if I, could, if I just revert the level of quality to a 50, you can then see the difference there. So the lower the number, the better. And then you can change the lighting settings to suit whatever it is you want to portray. Now, another thing, while, while we're on 50 level of quality as well, so I can just fly around a little bit, another amazing use case for having this in, in, in Unreal Engine. If I just uh, hover our, over our office, our office is just in the in the corner there, so this is absolutely amazing. Um, you could also use this for site analysis as well, couldn't you? You could even turn. It's not quite giving us what what we were after. You can sort of see what I'm getting at. There's a little, there's a few little settings to tweak, but like you've you've got like a, a quite a nice blocky 3D model that you can work with as well. Um, you know to create a. Diagrams, analysis, diagrams, all that sort of stuff. But if I just go back to this, you can also use this. Let me just knock the quality a little bit better. Um, just get rid of some of that, the pixelation in the water. But we can also use this to then, you know, have whatever kind of angle of diagram we need. We can then start to do, um, you know, microclimate analysis and stuff like that. And we've got full flexibility of the angle we want to take. And again, just a bit more control over lighting time of day and obviously the resolution of the image that you want to extract i mean i i am absolutely if you haven't noticed already <laughs> blown away by this technology to finish us off why not throw in a little post process volume as well let's just make sure it's set to unbound so it affects the full scene and then there's things like metering mode so you can then obviously mess with exposure 
and I've got other videos on this. Check out a, a few of my other Unreal Engine videos. A little shameless plug, if you want to learn Unreal Engine in detail, please head to Arcademia.com. We've got a full course there. But just to have a, a, a quick um, quick look at, you know, so we've got Bloom. You can see there the intensity of that. Always have it a convolution though, by the way. Um, there's a few other bits and bobs. We can mess with the slope and the toe. So we can, you know, just, just mess with the tone of the image. And obviously we've got all our Lumen settings, GI settings and all that sort of stuff. So there's so much you can do. And by the way, I think the, you can see the level of, as we're chatting, the level of sharpness of this image has improved as well. So that's a testament. So we've improved the level of quality. And it just took a little bit of time uh, to, to load in. The little um, piece of advice as well is, I did try other forms of lighting, like using um, the environment light mixer and all that sort of stuff. But I, personally, I found less bugs and better results by just using the default cesium sun sky. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you can start to use it in your workflow. It's been a game changer for us. And if you've ever got any questions, either leave them in the comments below or drop me an email, adam at arcademia.com. And please like and subscribe to continue to support the channel. Nice one. Now I did promise a bit of teleportation to a couple of other cities, didn't I? So what I've done is um, I've saved a couple more coordinates. I just wanted to demonstrate how quickly we can move around the globe. It's absolutely fantastic. So if we go back to geo reference, pop that one in, that one in, and we should land somewhere fairly familiar. And while that's loading, you know if you're shooting to a part of the world and it's completely black, change the solar time settings in the cesium sun and sky sometimes if it's too close to midnight if we just do zero sometimes it appears like that so it's good to just keep an eye on that if it goes black there we go paris we have the eiffel tower i don't know what this there's a bit of a bit of a blind spot there but anyway, you, you get the idea. And then one of my favorite places in the world, <clears throat> Venice, let's jump there. And these are the positions that I've taken the, uh, the animations at the start of the video from. That's St. Mark's Square there. Is that not an incredibly powerful tool? Everywhere the Google Maps has a 3D view, you know, in, in the browser version, you will get a result like that. So just thought I'd tag that onto the end of the video because I did promise it at the start. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.